Hi there, welcome to another episode of The Heart of a Youth Leader. It is absolutely bucketing with rain outside. I'm in my shed at the bottom of the garden. I've got my microphone as high as I can. Hopefully you won't be able to hear it too much and you'll be able to hear me, but I wanted to record this uh, weekly podcast for you in video. Uh, we're going to carry on looking at the characteristics of Jesus. Uh, and the characteristic I want to look at today is about how Jesus was fun. He was fun to be with and he was funny. I don't know if you ever think about Jesus's humour, but of course our humour, which makes us so human, is a reflection of the image of God. Uh, and and our, our humour uh, is what brings us together, isn't it? It, it, it? it draws us closer together, which is why always I think one of the important elements of our youth work has always got to be having fun. You know, a youth group without fun is not a place to be. I can remember once being part of uh, a monthly youth service uh, where uh, I knew there was something not quite right uh, and every month I went to it and I was just, I just it, it was going, it was, it was okay and it was, you know, there was nothing wrong with it, but there was, it didn't feel quite right. And then another youth leader came up to me and said, Andy, the problem is there's no fun. When do you see this many young people together and not having fun? And it was like such a, such a uh, godly insight into what we needed to change and what needed to be better, what needed to be different, because fun attracts. Fun is what helps us to find what we've got in common with each other, isn't it? Uh, and as we look at Jesus in scripture, we actually can, we can miss his humour because it's a different culture to us. Uh, we read everything with, a, oh yes, that's what Jesus said, uh, how profound. We're often actually, it is profound, but it's funny. It's very funny. Uh, and I've said before that I've been watching the video series, The Chosen, which if you haven't seen it yet, you must watch. It is just beautiful. Uh, and what they capture really well is Jesus's humour. Uh, and he's got he's got a real fast witty side but not in not in the sort of uh, have I got news for you kind of style which is always cr laughing at someone's expense criticizing others for a sake of a joke and, and 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 I and I enjoy that program quite a lot but you you have to be careful are we laughing because we think we're better than the person we're making the joke about uh, in our youth groups are people making jokes at the expense of others do we do that or actually are we just being saying something that is funny or ridiculous or using the extreme and i think jesus uses the extreme uses the ridiculous to make jokes but never at the at the cost of upsetting someone never at the cost of running someone down or trying to put them himself or others above other people I want to give you two examples where I think Jesus is actually being really funny. Uh, and the first is in Matthew chapter 19, when the disciples came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And you can imagine Jesus going, here we go. They're all fighting for their place. They want to know who's top dog in heaven. Uh, where, where do they sit in the ranking? Uh, uh, and it's it's so human nature, isn't it, to be that competitive? We've got the Olympics going on at the moment, and you can see how competitive people are. Uh, but as Jesus calls a little child, and and has this child stand among them, uh, and and I love the fact that Jesus just calls to this child. He probably didn't know this child, but he just beckons, and the child comes. And you can just imagine Jesus's voice being gentle, friendly, that the child. Is, is willing to come and stand amongst them. It wouldn't have been aggressive, it wouldn't have been um, forceful, it would have been gentle uh, and welcoming. And he gets this child to stand amongst them and he says, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now this is funny, we miss the joke. Jesus, the the, the the disciples are going, come on then, God, come on then, Jesus, who's the most important of us? You know, who's going to be the most important in heaven? How do we get to that prestigious place? And Jesus goes, right, what can I do to turn this upside down? And he brings in this child, probably a toddler, probably a real uh, 
a child that has complete dependence on adults for survival, you know, and, and has this humility, has this childish innocence to do whatever he's asked to do. Uh, and so Jesus goes, well, you want to know who the greatest is? Here's the most helpless amongst you. And that's Jesus being funny. In our Tao way of reading the Bible, we don't see the humour perhaps, or not immediately, but actually it is extreme bringing in this helpless child to say this is, this is the greatest in heaven. It's not literally saying necessarily this child is the greatest or children are the greatest, but he re-emphasises the child's humility, that the child isn't full of arrogance and pride at this stage because he's still learning, still adjusting and, and dependent and is happy to, to be dependent on others for survival. How we, Jesus is saying, need to be dependent on God for survival. The second passage I want us to look at, just briefly, is in the um, Sermon on the Mount at the beginning of Matthew's Gospel. In fact, Matthew chapter 7, when he talks about judging others, and it says, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way as you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you used, it will be measured to you. And here's the funny bit. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? He's saying, you're saying to your, to your friend, oh, you've got this little problem, when actually you've got this massive problem that you can't see and you're not dealing. You're trying to help someone get better eyesight when you're covered in one eye yourself. This is funny. You can imagine Jesus doing visual comedy with this. You know, talking about this tiny speck and this plank in your eye. It's funny. Uh, it's not putting anyone down, it's not at anyone's expense, but actually the point really comes across. How can we judge others for something that's really not very significant when we ourselves know who we really are? We know our own sin, we know where we get things wrong, we know the stuff that we wouldn't want anyone else to find out. He's being funny and using extremes to make a joke but to make a point that really drives itself home. Uh, and it's so clever, isn't it, how Jesus does this? It's so clever how he, he uses it to, to get people's attention, to make sure that people understand what's going on uh, and, uh, and the point he's making. And the thing is, young people love humour, don't they? they and, and I think that they, the thing they love about Jesus is that he's a guy that never seems to be at loss for words. He's kind, but also you can see actually he is funny. Uh, and so we need to make sure that we are, we are presenting the funny side of Jesus to the young people that we lead and that we get alongside, that they can see that Jesus isn't saying make life serious. He's not saying don't ever have fun. He's not saying, you know, just go and tidy your bedroom uh, and do things which are... are uh, honourable but pretty boring. He's actually saying, I came to bring life in all its fullness. That means having a lots of fun, a life of adventure. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be fun. So let's make sure we're having fun uh, in our youth groups, not at the cost of anyone else, not at the cost or the detriment of introducing people to who God really is, but as part of learning the image we are of God in human form is to have fun because Jesus was funny. Now it doesn't mean we've got to become jo jokers or pranksters or stand-up comedians. <laughs> I'd love to but I can't do it. But we can just be funny in the, in the moment. We can just uh, look for the funny side of things to help people understand to put people at their ease. I wonder if Jesus used comedy to put people at their ease. Uh, and, uh, and because there is, there is the funny side of life. It is fun to laugh, isn't it? That thing about how many times children laugh a day compared to adults, there's something uh, healthy in laughing. So let's make sure we have healthy laughter, healthy fun in our youth work. Uh, and by doing that, we can introduce our young people to who Jesus really is. Go for it.